We are going to enable a domain to use the real-time traffic anomaly detection. You will first want to visit analytics.constellix.com and log in with your credentials. If you are already logged into the DNS application or the sonar monitoring application, or if you have been previously logged into analytics application, you may not need to log in again. Once you are logged in, you will be presented with your view of the analytics tools. What we are concerned with right here is the anomaly column. You can click on any one of these icons. You can see currently I have three domains enabled for real-time anomaly detection. So I can click on any one of these and you will be um, given the list of the domains that you can visualize. Down here in the visualization, I can click on a domain and you can see where actually anomaly events have occurred. I can um, click on this view and you can get a, a really um, good detail of what we were expecting. You can tell right here, uh, we actually received 15,436 queries in this time period, and we're only expecting 13,866. That's a pretty good spike, something I may be alerted of, right? I can then go into that domain and do more research for it. If I want to go into that domain, I click on server.us, of course. Um, this will give me the listing of all the POPs we have around the world and all their traffic and where they are. And I can say, okay, most of my queries are coming in Frankfurt. I can go to the Frankfurt pop and then click on play. Once I click on play, I'm actually going to be seeing all the different queries that are be coming in at that time. This is my raw data. We do have a top view, which shows you the different actual queries that are coming in. Um, and it gives you a breakdown of the source address, the EDNS client, subnet, the version, the record types, the countries, the cities. Uh, we map it out on a map for you to show exactly where those queries are coming from, to identify where this anomaly could be coming from. But once again, more importantly, we give you that raw data. And this raw data, you can actually save it, um, parse it yourself. It's a CSV file, which you can do more data anomaly um, algorithms on. If you wanted to, you can load it back in there. But let's once again, let's go back into here, and we're going to go into the uh, anomaly screen. And what I want to do is I'm going to enable more domains to have that. So I'm going to click on the manage. If I'm not brought to the manage immediately, and I'm going to want to automatically turn off one. Let's look how we turn this one off. I'm going to unclick it and click save, and this will now turn anomaly detection off for that domain. To turn it back on, I could click on the domain I want it turned on for, and here's where I'm going to choose my aggregation type. I could choose it by world. You can see overall on the whole entire world view of my traffic, um, is there an anomaly? I could do it on a per region level. So say within each region, is there an anomaly? Or I could do it on a per city, per pop, point of presence to say within each pop. We suggest most users to always start with the world view because this is probably a better depiction of your traffic as you see it across the world. And you click on save. As soon as you click on save, it's brought to the top of the list over here. So I'm gonna do it again for another domain. Make sure I'm at the world view and click save and it's brought to the top. So now I added two domains to use the real-time traffic anomaly detection. Next thing I'm probably gonna to wanna to do is be identified when there's an anomaly happening for my domain. So I'm gonna click on contacts and then let's add a group. And in the group right here, uh, I'm gonna call this DevOps. Uh, and you're gonna notice if I do add a space or anything, it does give you a little error message. So make sure you look at what it's allowed in our group names, letters, numbers, dash, and underscores, and periods are allowed. I'm just gonna call it DevOps here. Hit enter, then click save, and now I'll save it in the system. At this point, I most likely would probably wanna add a couple email addresses to this. So let me add a, a test email over here. I'm gonna put steve at example.com and then hit enter and then click save. Once again, you would enter your own email address here. Do not enter steve at example.com. Every so often I do these demos and people tend to copy it exactly as what I say. What you would wanna do is enter your own email address or the email address of the individuals you wanna be contacted. And you can add multiple addresses as well. So let's say I wanna do one that says mike uh, at example.com. Um, hit enter and click save. So now those are both those are both email addresses that are added to this group. And now I want to choose which domains that I want to receive anomaly detections for. So I can say, okay, I want to do it for uh, the, both of the REST and Tech Talks one and that server.us domain that I had also before. You click save and you're done. Now, anytime there's an anomaly that is uh, that happens, if I go back and look at uh, server.us, you'll see every time that if I had this contact group enabled for this domain, I will get an email alerting me that there's an anomaly that just happened to log into the analytics tool and help try to troubleshoot what this problem may be. And that is kind of giving you all that stuff. You can tell how we're modeling everything. It's using the Arima for uh, uh, the Fourier Arima modeling uh, algorithms. Uh, and machine learning, which is going to depict which actual pattern it's best fits, best fits your domain. And then once it leaves that range, we're going to alert you on that. So once again, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know.
please reach out to https colon slash slash support.constellix.com. We are here to help you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Thank you very much.